Hello viewers, welcome back to our channel. Kindly subscribe, comment, like, and also share. I think the problem that uh, she has is the British people have found her out. You know, it's basically the problem she has is the obnoxious way she treats people. She uses okay. them to what gain whatever she wants, and then she spits them out, and uh, once they're no longer of any use to her, she just cuts them dead. Who has she done I mean, that to? prime example... Sorry? Who has she done that to, in your opinion? Her ex-husband, uh, the people she was uh, connected to... Well, we don't know anything really about like what happened with Hang her, her ex-husband. OK, Hang but on. why, but why, why do you automatically... To explain to you. Okay. I'm trying to explain to you, but if you cut me off, well, no, I, I need explain. you to I need you to give me evidence for what you're saying because it's very close her to defamation of character. You asked, what you're saying, you ask for examples, yeah. and I'll give you examples. Right, her ex-husband, the connected people that what happened with her ex-husband? I don't know. Why do you know? To, who tried to introduce her to society? Once they uh, have no use to her, she cut them off. Um, but she's used the royal family to gain what she wants so she can social climb. What she did with her ex-husband is she married him because he was a TV and film producer. He could open doors for her. But, you know, once he was of no use to her anymore, she'd uh, got what she wanted. She divorced him. They were married for less than two but years. But don't, don't you think she's you could accuse used, any woman who marries into the royal family of social climbing? You could just as easily, and not that I would, but you could just as easily level that accusation at Kate Middleton or Fergie. Could you not? I'm sorry, you can't. Not at Kate. Look at the way she treated Kate's servants. <laughs> Why not? Servants. Look at the way she treated Kate's servants. She made them... She's just <laughs> absolutely disgusting. Kate's the way she servants? Them. And oh, she dear. made Kate cry. Cry... Uh, well, Kate had to pull her up and say, you don't speak to servants that way. Right. She's got an obnoxious attitude to other people. To other people who are below her, she treats them like dirt. Now, the problem she's got is... But what, right, so she, she made Kate qu cry on one dinner. occasion. What other right. evidence do you... She's made Kate cry on one occasion, according to the tabloids. How do we know that Kate has never made Megan cry, but we just don't know about it? Well, we would know about it if she had. Kate would never do that. Look, <laughs> Kate didn't treat people the way this person treats other people, especially those below her. What are your she sources, James? Where, where have you got this information? Off. She cuts them off once she, they are no longer of use to her. Well, I'll give you a source. Lizzie Cundy. She was introduced to her. Lizzie could open doors for a helper. Well, you know, get connected. Lizzie Cundy, she what, no the, the ex-footballer's wife? There's other people who are associates of Lizzie Cundy who also say she used them once they're no longer of any use, she's cut them dead. Okay, That's thank you, James. So this is the evidence we have on the table on the one side. So on the one side, we've got clear evidence of a bias against Meghan and Harry, possibly fueled by racism, definitely fueled by this idea of who does she think she is. She has the temerity to be divorced, to not be a virgin, to not be white, to not be the things that we associate with a royal bride. On the other hand, we have our evidence from James that apparently she once made Kate cry and Lizzie Cundy doesn't think much of her. Which of those do you find the most persuasive? A recent call to a LBC Natasha Devon radio presenter station has reignited the debate surrounding Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex. The caller made a series of accusations against the Duchess, alleging that she was manipulative and disrespectful to the royal family. Dot the caller was claiming that Meghan has been found by the British public, of which it's not the truth. Meghan has faced many critics by the British media, these accusations, though unsubstantiated, have fueled the flames of an already heated public discourse about Meghan's place within the monarchy and her relationship with the British public. This incident is far from isolated. Since her relationship with Prince Harry became public, Meghan has found herself subject to intense scrutiny, with her every move analysed and often criticised. The caller's accusations, while extreme, reflect a broader sentiment of distrust and disapproval that has plagued Meghan since her arrival on the royal scene. The question remains, why has Meghan become such a polarising figure? To understand the current controversy, we need to examine the broader context of Meghan's experiences within the royal family and the role of the media in shaping public perception. This essay will delve into the complexities of Meghan's situation, exploring the accusations levelled against her, the challenges she has faced, and the broader implications of her story for the future of the monarchy.
Meghan Markle's entry into the public eye was far from ordinary. From her early days as an actress, she was no stranger to the limelight. As a successful actress with a thriving career and a strong social media presence, she was already accustomed to a certain level of fame. Her role in the hit TV series Suits had garnered her a significant following and a taste of what it means to be in the public eye. However, nothing could have prepared her for the relentless glare of the spotlight that comes with being a member of the British royal family. The scrutiny and attention were on a completely different scale. From the moment her relationship with Prince Harry was confirmed, Meghan became the subject of intense media attention. Every aspect of her life was dissected and analysed. Tabloids published countless stories about her life, her family and her past, often with little regard for accuracy or privacy. The media frenzy was relentless, and the headlines were often sensationalised. The scrutiny was relentless, with paparazzi following her every move and commentators dissecting her every outfit, every smile and every interaction. The pressure was immense and unyielding. This intense level of scrutiny is not unusual for those who marry into the royal family. The public's fascination with the royals has always been high, and the media's interest is insatiable. Princess Diana, famously dubbed the People's Princess, also endured years of relentless media attention and public scrutiny. Her every move was watched, and her life was constantly under the microscope. However, the nature of media has changed dramatically since Diana's time with the rise of social media adding a new layer of complexity and intensity to the public's relationship with figures in the spotlight. The digital age has amplified the scrutiny and made it more pervasive. For Meghan, the constant scrutiny has taken a toll. The relentless pressure and invasion of privacy have been overwhelming. She has spoken openly about the negative impact of the relentless criticism and the toll it has taken on her mental health. The constant barrage of negative press and public judgment has been difficult to bear. In a candid interview, she admitted that she was not okay and described the pressure as almost unsurvivable. Her honesty shed light on the human cost of living life under such intense scrutiny. Joining the royal family is not simply about marrying a prince. It is about entering an institution with centuries of tradition, protocol and expectations. This institution is steeped in history with every action scrutinized and every gesture analyzed. The weight of this legacy can be overwhelming for anyone stepping into this world. For someone like Meghan, who came from a background far removed from the world of palaces and royal engagements, adapting to this new life presented unique challenges. Meghan was an accomplished actress with a successful career, accustomed to a certain level of independence and freedom. The transition from Hollywood to the British monarchy was not just a change in lifestyle, but a complete cultural shift. The royal family operates within a strict framework of rules and customs that dictate everything from how one dresses to how one interacts with the public. These protocols are designed to maintain the dignity and continuity of the monarchy, ensuring that every member upholds the values and traditions that have been passed down through generations. For someone used to the relative freedom of a life outside the royal bubble, these restrictions can feel stifling. Meghan found herself constantly under the microscope, with every move she made being judged against the backdrop of royal expectations. The pressure to conform to these standards while trying to retain her individuality was immense. Meghan's attempts to carve out her own identity within this rigid structure were often met with resistance, with some accusing her of breaking protocol and challenging tradition. Her modern approach and willingness to speak her mind were seen as disruptive by those who valued the status quo. This clash of cultures highlighted the tension between tradition and modernity within the royal family.